Hi, I'm Irving, and I'm an Adamaniac. As our story opens, we see Alfred out shopping. He drops into a little fish market that's advertising cut-rate caviar. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Fresh fish today? Well, that depends. Yeah, I uh, ran across this handbill advertising uh, cut-rate caviar. Yes, sir. Right this way. The best in town. So I hope. I should never permit myself to serve anything but the best. How much you need? A couple of ounces? Half a pound? Twenty pounds at least, my good man. A pound per guest. A pound per guest. Either Bruce Wayne is really generous or he wants all his guests to get really fat. Now, uh, pardon me, ladies. <laughs> Hmm, very mild. Now, if it's all as good as this... Well, what's the meaning of this? Uh, help! Police! Help! 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 I say! <laughs> A gas-spewing umbrella. We all know what that means. There's no doubt, Commissioner. No doubt or me name ain't... O'Hara. Uh, Chief O'Hara. That's right. Apparently, Chief really is his first name. He had some sadistic parents. No wonder he's trying to forget his own name. Gordon calls Batman and tells him that Bruce Wayne's butler, Alfred, he doesn't have a last name in this series as far as I remember, has been kidnapped. Dick, I'm afraid you better put your Latin verbs aside for the nonce. The missing man is Alfred. Holy Wayne Manor, you don't mean our Alfred. No, Alfred Frumpelmeyer, my cousin. Yes, Dick, I mean our Alfred. To the bat poles. At headquarters, they reason out that although Alfred has been kidnapped, there's been no ransom request. So what other reason would the Penguin have to snatch him? Then I think I can answer that, Chief O'Hara. The multi-millionaire's annual award dinner. You mean the one at which a dozen multimillionaires each donate a million dollars cash to a chosen charity? Twelve million bucks cash? That might make a tempting target for the Penguin all right, or anybody else with half a brain and questionable ethics. What does Alfred the Butler have to do with that? It's not common knowledge, but Alfred is the major domo at that affair. They always keep the location secret until just before the dinner for security, but if Alfred is overseeing the food and such, then he's bound to know where it is. And with the right persuasion, he's likely to tell the penguin. On, Robin. Let's race to the scene of the kidnapping. We may find a clue. But, Batman, the fish store is empty. It's a, it's a false fish store. That's right. We checked it over from stem to stern. I've been watching this show and I've seen your police work. That doesn't inspire confidence. Meaning, no offense, Chief O'Hara, your department is the finest in the land, but where you failed, Robin and I may succeed. Batman has also been watching the show and came to the same conclusion. You're the finest in the land, but you fail. Now we have to go clean up your mess. Down on the waterfront, we get a look into the Penguin's hideout. Arculus! Good morning. Good morning, boss. Oopsie. It's lovely, Vanilla, my little pollywoggy, lovely. You're not even looking. You told me to practice, and you'd make sure that I won a bathing beauty contest. You will. I'll see to that. It's all part and parcel of my piratical plan. I wonder how hard Batman is going to try and reform that poor, misguided little waif. He seems to have a thing for the bad guy's eye candy. The guy in the background is tormenting Alfred to get him to tell the location of the dinner, but the Penguin explains that he can't tell what he doesn't know. But, boss, if he don't have the answer, what good is he? Well, you don't comprehend my super-calculated trickery, but you will. <laughs> so will you, Alfred, my boy, when I put you in the Penguin box. He's going to ship him to Abu Dhabi so he can bring Nermal back. The penguin box gives Alfred some kind of steam bath that brainwashes him. Then the penguin takes control. 
You will remember none of this. I will remember none of this. What you will remember is the time. The time. And the place. And the place. Of the multi millionaire's dinner. Of the multi millionaire's dinner. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, what? Yes. Sir? Batman and Robin arrive at the bogus fish market. Not a clue in sight. What's that on the floor, Robin? That crumpled piece of paper. It only took them six seconds to notice it sitting right out there in plain sight. They're getting better. It's the flyer Alfred was holding. First come, first served. Look closer. The name of the proprietor. Not a fish. Not a fish? Don't you see, Robin? If he's not a fish... Of course! Holy subliminal. If he's not a fish, he must be the penguin. And that gains them what? They already knew they were dealing with a penguin. Just then, the bat phone in the car goes off. It's Commissioner Gordon reporting that Alfred is safe and sound back home. Batman and Robin think it feels a little too convenient, so they're off to talk to Alfred. Fish store? What fish store? The one you went to to purchase the caviar. I never went to any fish store, sir. I did as I always do. Purchased it direct through the Iranian embassy. Why? Is anything the matter, sir? Where did you get that twitch? Get what, sir? That twitch. Twitch, sir? What twitch? How often does Alfred get to wink at his employer and get away with it? They show him some pictures, including the penguin and his two henchmen, but Alfred doesn't recognize any of them. That seems weird to me because I'm sure he's at least seen the penguin on television and probably seen pictures of him in the course of Batman and Robin dealing with him before. So if he doesn't remember the penguin at all, even to the point of asking what his name is, then something is very wrong with Alfred's head. Upstairs, they're having a rehearsal for the big dinner. How do we decide where we have dinner? By vote, as usual, in the democratic way. Uh, canopy, sir? I uh, don't mind if it do. Hey, watch this. A fish hook. I'm terribly sorry, sir. It must have fallen out of my morning coat. Your morning coat? Uh, yes, sir. The one I wore this morning when I was preparing the canopies. Excuse me, old boy. Sir, please do have another. I can assure you the rest has fallen from his morning coat. The one he wore. Yes, this morning when the penguin grabbed him. A clue, Dick. Quickly, back to the bat cave. Batman figures a fish hook points to the waterfront, so he starts looking for a pier and a familiar name. A fish, that's it! South Pier! Let's go! Don't you mean let's race? They head down there, but Penguin is waiting for them. He planted the fish hook to bring them here. What are you doing? Gee, Batman is handsome when I can make out under the mask. What you can make, my dear, is make yourself scarce. Here we go again with the women swooning over Batman. They barge in and the penguin springs his trap. He made a human-sized umbrella pinball machine. This is supposed to capture them? Well, apparently it works because Batman and Robin lose the fight and end up like this. Penguin decides to kill them by putting them in the vacuum tank. Because using an electric pump is just so last season. All the best criminals are making their henchmen do it by hand these days. Greetings, dynamic duo. <laughs> He has a typically Batman gauge for measuring the air left in the room. I'm 
enough for all, but not for long. Enough for all for how long? If it's an airtight room, the oxygen isn't going to last forever and the carbon dioxide is going to build up. So you really don't even need that pump. Just leave them in there for a couple of days. As it often happens in this show, pretend you don't know that. As the air pressure in the room goes down, the balloons start popping as if to signal the imminent end of our heroes. Can this be happening to the dynamic duo? How can they live? Will they be vanquished by a vacuum? He really did say vanquished and nobody caught it. Revive, Robin! Breathe, Batman! We'll hold our breath for you both. Until tomorrow night, same time, same channel. That's bat time and bat channel to you, sir. I don't know why they weren't consistent with that, but as we move to wrap up this first season, it seems like we've been feeling our way along, sorting out a lot of things like that as we go. At one point in the episode before this one, Batman says, If only we had our Batcopter. We've never seen one, and that's the first indication that there even is such a thing. But it's just enough foreshadowing that we'll see the Batcopter introduced in the movie that appeared between Season 1 and Season 2. That's assuming, of course, that Batman and Robin can breathe sufficiently to fly it. We may end up with Alfred at the controls and Aunt Harriet flinging batarangs all over the place. I would pay to see that. I'm Irving and I'm an Adamaniac.